thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming tonight, and Caroline, thank you for that kind introduction. What, of course, I'm not is Mr. Bob McMullen, Parliamentary Secretary for International Development, and he is very apologetic that parliamentary requirements have kept him from doing this speech himself. Nonetheless, uh, let me thank World Vision and IWDA for hosting this debate. It's an important topic and, and a timely discussion given the global efforts underway to reach a new climate change agreement in Copenhagen uh, in December this year. Lord Nicholas Stern, the author of the globally influential 2006 report on the economics of climate change, described climate change as the, quote, greatest market failure the world has seen. If the problem is market failure, then that is a failure to adequately value natural resources and ecosystem services, then it suggests the issues such as carbon pricing and carbon markets are likely to have an important role in solving this. The primary aim of carbon markets is to allow investments and emission reductions to occur where it is most efficient and where the costs of doing so are lowest. Putting a price on carbon creates an incentive for innovation in low carbon technologies. We all know of the Kyoto Protocol, which was agreed in 1997. It establishes a number of market-related mechanisms to assist developing countries in meeting their emissions reduction targets. These include emissions trading and the Clean Development Mechanism, which is more commonly known as the CDM. This allows developing countries to invest in projects to reduce emissions, sorry, de developed countries to reduce emissions in developing nations. These emission reductions can then be counted towards the developed countries' Kyoto targets. The global carbon market has been going rapidly over recent years. The World Bank report released last month reported the total value of the market in 2008 to have reached almost $160 billion Australian. With a market of this sort of value, the question is whether carbon markets can be used to promote sustainable development is certainly a, que a question worth considering. So I want to focus tonight on two concepts which link carbon markets to sustainable development. The first is this clean development mechanism, again the CDM, which is of course anyone in aid has a bad habit of acronyms. The CDM presents a primary opportunity for carbon markets to support sustainable development under the Kyoto Protocol. The second newer concept known as reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation in developing countries, much more easily referred to as RED, aims to address both climate change and deforestation in developing countries. This is a concept currently missing from the Kyoto Protocol, but which needs to be incorporated in the Copenhagen outcomes. But let me start with the CDM. It has been the subject of some criticism in the past. An argument often levelled at the CDM is that it allows industrialised countries to outsource their emissions reductions, avoiding taking action at home. I don't agree with this criticism. The additional flexibility of CDM allows developed countries to accept more stringent emission caps, while simultaneously encouraging the transfer of clean technologies and development benefits in partner developing countries. Let me illustrate. In Nepal, the World Bank, working with the Alternative Energy Promotion Centre, has used the CDM to install more than 100,000 biogas digesters in poor rural villages. The project uses animal waste to generate biogas for cooking. This not only reduces reliance on non-renewable fuel wood and kerosene, but also reduces the greenhouse gas emissions that would otherwise have generated from untreated animal wastes. CDM credits are then generated on the basis of these avoided emissions. The project is expected to generate emission reductions of up to 46,000 tonnes per year, which are sold on the international market. At today's carbon credit prices, this brings in about half a million a year, which in turn is used to sub subsidise the cost of the stoves using the biogas. The use of biogas to generate electricity is expected to reduce the incidence of indoor air pollution related illnesses. It's also expected to relieve women and children of the burden of having to travel long distances to gather fuel in forests, boosting the opportunities for both increased school enrolment and of course forest conservation.